In verse 1, the scripture says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel, somebody say counsel, of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Now, bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Somebody say that. And whatsoever he does shall prosper. I'm here to tell you today, church, before we can do anything of the Lord, you may be seated, before we can do anything of the Lord, we've got to have the Lord in us. How do we get the Lord in us? Well, we come to the cross of Jesus Christ and we get down on our knees and we ask the Lord to come into our heart and forgive us from all of our sin. And the Lord of uh, God will come in us and through His Spirit and through His written Word, He will cause us to be transformed into Him. We will, he will cause us to be transformed into the character of God. Let me tell you something. If you have the character of God, you will have mercy in you. If you have the character of God in you, church, you will have compassion. Praise the Lord. If you have the character of God, you will walk, hallelujah, with a, a compassionate heart. If you have the character of God in you, you will be faithful. God is faithful. When God comes into your life, He's not a half.
you won't get the Holy Ghost. Somebody says, well, I'm a Baptist, or I'm a Methodist, or I'm, I'm, a, I'm a different denomination. Well, I've never heard of this speaking in tongues and this Holy Ghost. Well, let me tell you something. If you hang around this little short, fat preacher long, if you don't watch it, you will be speaking with other tongues because the Holy Ghost is in me, on me, and around me, and God will change your life, and you will see a part of God that you ain't never seen before. Give the Lord praise, would you? Hallelujah. So what I'm trying to tell you today, church, we cannot take counsel from just anybody. We can't just hang around anybody. So let me tell you, you need to get around the people of God, and you need to stay with God and communicate with God. In First John, in First John chapter one, starting along with verse four, He said, "I write this unto thee." He wants us to have our joy full. He tells us in that verse. He says, "I want you to have." and he 
He's got lawyers. Hallelujah. He's got senators. He's got house of no church. He's got what he needs when he needs it. And whenever he gets ready, church, the church is going to rise up like you've never seen before. Give the Lord praise. Would you? Oh, we don't need to stand in the way of sinners and talk about things that should be going right. We should talk about the good things of the Lord. You know what that means? That means that you should never become a scorn. To scorn somebody. To speak against somebody. I don't care how mean or how bad you are. My wife will tell you, I will never talk about your bad points. I will always look down into your soul and try to find some good in you. Hallelujah. My wife says, I she says, I, I tell you what, you always find the good in people. Don't you ever learn? Don't you ever learn that some people just ain't going to change? I say, honey, all I know is I got the eyes of the Lord and I see potential in people. I see potential and I believe that God looks down into your heart. Hallelujah. He said, love will cover a multitude of sin. If you're loving somebody, hallelujah, instead of scorning somebody, if you Here today. 
more be successful. You want to prosper in God. I'm here to tell you, you got to understand that you've got to delight yourself in the Word of the Lord. Let's go to Romans. Praise the Lord. In Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Hallelujah. Chapter 10, verse 11. The Bible says, For the Scripture said, Whosoever believeth on Him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. The same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. That means God is not a God of segregation. He don't segregate His people. He don't push His people aside. He said, if you're call on Me, He said, I will cause you to become a part of Me. Neither Jew nor Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you know in the King James Version, that word shall is one of the greatest command words in the King James Version. Church, what I'm trying to tell you today, shall be saved. The Bible says if you call upon Him, you shall be saved. And there's so many people today that are not saved because we are scorners instead of preachers. We're looking, we're sitting in the seat of the scornful and we're looking at the bad instead of the good. And God says we don't need to sit in the seat of the scornful, but we need to deny ourselves in the Word of God and be taught that the Word of God teaches us to take on the character of God. It teaches us not to be racist. It teaches us not to segregate people. It teaches us whether they're rich or whether they're poor. Hallelujah. It teaches us that we should walk with God. someone else, let me tell you something. You're not nothing but what God made you to be. Hallelujah. It's alright. Everybody needs to be educated. Everybody needs money to make it in this world. But the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 7, you don't have it brother, the Lord just made it on my heart. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, 2 verse uh, 7, it says, the Lord maketh the poor and maketh the rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He, he rises up the poor out of the dust. He lifts up the beggar from the, the dumb hill. Now if you're freely down south, that interpretation of dumb hill would really get good. He rises you up out of the sewer. He rises you up out of. I started to go there, but I ain't going. He brings you up. Do you think of something? You know where you came from? The dumb view. We all came from the dumb view. The Lord is God that maketh us rich or maketh us poor. It is out from the dumb hill. He set us them among princes to make them inherit the, the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. And He has set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of His saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by the strength shall He for by the strength shall he own, uh, by the strength shall no man prevail. The adversary of the Lord shall be broken to pieces out of the heaven, shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth. He shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointing.
he shall give strength unto his kings and exalt the horn of his anointed. Now how is the world going to know that unless we get out there and open the eyes of the blinded eyes? The Bible says in verse 14, in Romans 10, in verse 14, the Bible says, How shall they then call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and glad tidings of good things. That's why I'm here this morning. I'm not here to be the judge. I'm not here to scorn you. I'm not here to beat you down. I'm not here to do nothing but to preach the good tidings of the Lord. I'm not, no, I'm, I'm doing nothing but preaching good tidings because to the saints and to the people of God, the Bible says He will give you the anointing. He will give you what you need. Even if He has to raise you up out of a dunghill, He will give you what you need. Even if He has to raise you up from being a beggar, He will, church, He will give you what you need. But before He can give you what you need, you that you cannot hide it when He gives it to you. When God gives you something, He don't want you to hide it. He wants you to use it. And there are so many people today that are going to these large churches. And listen to me. I love large churches. I preach in large churches. I'm going to be in one this next month. A very large church. And I don't have nothing against them. But we got people in these very large churches. And they're hiding out. And they're hiding their guilt. Brother Green has sat under the feet of a younger pastor 
in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 3, the Bible says, but if, the, but if our gospel be hid, somebody say that. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to the most. What if God called you to be here and you're bouncing around and going here and going there and one Sunday you went here and your gospel was hid because you decided to do what you wanted to do instead of what God wanted you to do. Let me our life to be here in this church. We have sacrificed our life to be here. Why? Not for people, but because God sent us here. And we want to serve. We want to do what God wants us to do. And that's changed the lives and the hearts of people. And we don't want to hide the gospel. We don't want to hide the gospel to the lost. The Bible says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. That's why we got atheists printing on billboards. I'm an atheist. And I'm proud of it. That's why we got prayer out of school. That's why we got we got uh, every everybody in the United States of America is being attacked because they tell Love. Why did he start out with love? The 
because you will never gain a friend with hate. The Bible says a soft answer turneth away wrath. Do you realize that you can take a soft talking man and an easy going person and come and speak wrath, the words of wrath, that you can make that man angry? I'm here to tell you, I'm saved and born again, but if you come to me and talk to me rough, come on man. You try to tell me what I'm going to do. You try to push me into something. I'm not here to try to tell you to do nothing. I'm trying to lead you with a soft answer to tell you that God says before you can do anything, you've got to approach people with love. Joy. Peace. Long-suffering. Gentleness. Goodness. Faith. Meekness. Temperance. Against such there is no law. That means when you have love in you, and you have joy in you, you have peace, and you have long-suffering, and you have all oh, gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and temperance. The Bible says, I no longer judge you by the 613 commandments. I no longer judge you by the commandments of the law that I wrote to the Jewish people, but I, I judge you by grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I thank you by grace. He said, I 
I have. I've been frustrated before. I was frustrated one time when I laid hands on the sick and they died. <laughs> I was frustrated one time when I was praying about something and it just took forever for it to come to pass. You ever been there? I was frustrated one time because I was praying about something one time and it just didn't go my way. But I had to come to the realization if God created the heavens and the earth, and if God, if it's God that, that maketh the poor and maketh the rich, if it's God that raises up uh, uh, the poor out of the dust and the beggar out of the dunghill, if it's God that ha that He has the, He has made the pillars of the earth and everything stands because He spoke it. Well, maybe I need to look for the eyes of God instead of the eyes of man. Until I came to the place that I was looking through God's eyes instead of my eyes. I was disappointed when I was looking through my eyes. But I became excited when I was looking through God's eyes. God taught me in the time of my frustration. He taught me in the time of my waiting. In the time of when, uh, wondering what was going to happen next. He taught me that in the midst of it all, hallelujah, I am with you. In the midst of it all, it all is going to pan out. I've got the big picture. You're only seeing snapshots of things. Some of you are seeing snapshots even now as I preach. Some of you see snapshots of different things. You wonder about some things. We as human beings, if we don't watch it, we wonder about some things, Brother Jake. We wonder, we wonder, why did this have to happen? Why? This sister right here had a stroke. And sister, God brought you through it. Now you can talk about faith. Now you can talk about faith because you've been living faith. You're living faith. Every time you get up and walk, you're living faith. Do you know what happened when sister had that stroke? She was sitting there every Sunday. She didn't miss a Sunday. She didn't miss a church. She was here about every service. And you know what happened? Her pastor got right where she sat at every week in church. And I said, Lord, I sat in the lame spot. I sat in the lame spot. And I believe in God. You're going to bring her through. And you're going to heal her. And you're going to satisfy her family in the name of Jesus. And church, we have to go through faith. And we have to believe God. And we have to take on the character of God. And believe
But the only way you can talk about faith and the only way you're going to get through what you're going through is to get the character of God in your life. And the only way we're going to wake up the United States of America and, and these so-called atheists and, and these people that don't believe in nothing and these people that believe in everything, the only way we're going to get them to change their mind is through the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you this morning, church, if you will hide your gift and get up and use your gift, whether it's a mechanic or whether it's a construction worker or whether it's a doctor or a lawyer or whether it's money, whatever. Tennessee. I grew up on the riverbank. My grandpa loved fishing. They ain't no telling how many times I woke up with my bones so cold. It felt like it was cold as the ground where I laid on the ground after fishing all night long. I grew up by this one tree that's still there even today. And that one tree has encouraged me because when I was five years old, I sat on the roots of that tree.